I'm Matt McAlonis, um, engineer manager at TE Connectivity. So if you haven't recognized, the multi-gig connector is a pretty popular connector on these cards. And I actually wasn't supposed to give the presentation this year. Rod Smith, who is our, one of our fiber optic experts, had a family issue, so he wasn't able to make it. And he is, uh, so our, our next uh, phase in our information is gonna be largely geared toward fiber optic. And so uh, give me a little grace as I get through it. <laughs> so who are we? We, we connect everything. And uh, we're not just the connectors that plug in the back plane. Uh, we're involved with the standards in some of these VPX systems. So we do mezzanines, uh, we do the RF, the 67, the fiber optic 66, and uh, many, many others. So uh, TE connectivity is uh, largely involved in connectivity. And I always appreciate Jerry's update from the Consumer Electronics Show. And how many were here last year? So not everybody. So I'm going to lead into what we talked about last year a little bit to give a little background. But we talked about in Consumer Electronics, it's kind of fun to see what's coming out. And some of these products won't survive very long. They'll be here this year. They'll be gone. And we can live and laugh and kind of make fun of them sometimes. The androids, how long will they last? Last. And in the telecom products, you really notch it up to, I think, one level. But when you look at this market and try to adopt these products in embedded computing, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you have to make an investment in making it work. And so what we talked about last year was in the embedded computing world, life's like a jar of jalapenos. Because what you do today, come, come back and burn you tomorrow. So keep that in mind when you make your connectivity selections especially. So we also looked at what's happening in the channel. So you're going to see a little uh, electron show up on these devices. And in a standard digital channel, what you're seeing are these electrons are going off the card through the connectivity into the backplane and into another card. And we also know that you can do this with fiber optics. So what happens with fiber optics is you do that uh, conversion from electrons to photons, and you see the photon flying back and forth. And we also have some new things we're doing in high-speed cable options. So there's a lot of ways you can do this, but our talk today is really going to be focused on fiber optic. So last year, uh, we talked about things are going faster and faster. So the bandwidth is increasing. More and more sensors are driving uh, big data. It has to work. If it doesn't work, you can't sell your products. You don't have a market. What can we do about it? We're making sure a TE, we're uh, within the 46 compliance. We are looking at some of the new technologies. So we'll get into that. We have a lot of really neat things we can do with the uh, VPX connector because it's made out of miniature circuit boards. And everything matters when you get to these next uh, levels of performance. So when I talked with Rod uh, on Wednesday when he told me uh, he couldn't make it here, he said it's really very, very simple. It comes down to algebra. And he has a daughter that's in high school. And he's working with her on some of her algebra problems. And he said it's very, very simple, Matt. When you look at the equation, it's a simple fiber optics equation. And this is how I felt when he explained to me <laughs> how simple that equation was. But it really breaks down to a couple of things. What's required in the application? Because there's a lot of things that you have to consider. And so he's saying there's certain things that are going to be important to, to build your equation as a customer. And then what's happening in the industry? It makes no sense for us to try to reinvent and re-pioneer this land because it's already been done. And then what's possible, we'll talk about some of the things that you can do with fiber optic connectivity that you may not be aware of. So taking a look at the uh, equation, the first thing is how many lanes do you need to get out of your box? And that determines what type of connectivity you have, whether it's an MT, which you can get very, very high density. And Roger did a great job at explaining this fiber optic interconnect. How much power do you need to drive these transceivers? 
And thermal issues is a, is a huge part of the system design, whether it's liquid cooled, air cooled, air flow by, uh, conduction cooled. You have a lot of things to consider in how much power that device needs to operate and how much heat you have to get out of your system. What's the cost? Everyone wants to know that, obviously. And then what about the, the board real estate on your card? Do you have any space left to put these devices? And then making it work. When you look at some of the transceivers that are available, they probably can't meet some of the strict requirements for some of your applications. So what we find is that depending on what you're trying to do in your application, you can come up with this equation and determine what is most important, what is relevant, and determine your solution. This slide shows, and it, it's a couple years back, but what it really shows is how long does it take to work on a, a product. And this is saying you really take at least probably be about five years to get technology mature enough before you can really release it into a standard and make it work. And so what's already been done, you can see some of these standards. This PCI Express is 16 gig SAS, which is data storage, 24. 4 gig, uh, Finiband 25 gig, there's 56 gig. So this is really way ahead, I think, of where we're at in most of our uh, sensor type applications. And then when you talk about what needs to communicate, as we saw in that one earlier slide, uh, depending on uh, what is talking to what in the system and what it needs to go through, there's all different additional requirements and these standards are already being developed in the, in the optical world. IEEE, again, we're looking at 100 gig, uh, 400 gig, 25 gig. So these are some of the standards that I think we at Vita uh, can pay attention to. And as we look to the future, uh, some things are going to be important. I did see, uh, you know, Roger did a good job, I think, of putting you know, some of the products that are using fiber. But what is the time to market for your application? Uh, make sure that you understand what your customer is giving to you as your objectives. So make sure you can hit it. And for example, uh, when you, we talk about things like temperature, we talk about reliability, do you have the things that you need to know to make sure that you can even meet the requirements? And also make sure we're, pay, again, paying attention to what's happening in the fiber optic industry. This is a schematic of the different types of fiber optic interconnect. Uh, the thing I think we're probably most familiar in this forum here is what's happening in Vita 66. So what's, in Vita 66, you simply have a car that plugs into a backplane, and there's different types of termini that you can adopt. And, and these are in the 66.1, .2, and .3 specs. You also have what comes out of the box. So if you're going long distances, for example, you may want to convert to fiber optics to drive for a long distance. Or perhaps you have a, a weight issue where you uh, want to take advantage of the benefit of going with a uh, lightweight cable option. And also the termini and contacts, and we'll, we'll get into that and talk about what some of those differences are. Uh, the types of cable, and also coming right off the transceiver. So these are some of the areas that you can consider when you think about the fiber optic channel. Uh, some of the technologies are shown on this page uh, in the upper left is the uh, actual connect on the outside of the box. Uh, the termini are down here. We make some really, really interesting lens termini. We also do things like fiber optic backplane, so we can actually lay the fiber on a mylar sheet and route it. Bend radius is always important. When you deal with fiber optics, you don't want to break that fiber cable. Uh, the interconnect we're working in, uh, the dot four space, uh, get anything small. And these are things that we have at T Conductivity that, that can produce these. We also have uh, some actual transceivers that we have. They're not embedded computing grade at this point. They're commercial grade. They can't handle the temperatures that we require. But T Conductivity is involved with this space as well. Lens termini. So what is it about the lens termini that's important? Anytime you have any dust or de debris, you risk blocking the photon. And so this slide shows a 20 micron particle of dust is sufficient enough on a standard MT ferrule to fully block that, that light. 
And when you look at the bottom one, you have a 10x uh, advantage when you put a lens on top of the photon. So what we see here is if you take a statistical distribution of dust and put dust particles in your application, which will happen, you can see the effect. And so the chart shows uh, what is the effect of loss uh, when you have dust in there. So you can see that the, the drop in uh, photon power is significant if you don't have a lens, potentially. So what are our key takeaways? So what Rob really wanted me to communicate is that VITA is a standards group. And so we're building standards relevant to our markets. However, we can leverage what's going on in the industry and take advantage of it, and we don't have to reinvent the wheel. Second thing, we really have to be sure we establish the metrics that we need to perform to when we write our standards. And thirdly, we have to look at the full system. We have to look from the transceiver to the conversion to the type of cable to the type of interconnect you have and look at that whole approach and look at that equation again to what's important. And lastly, we want to reinforce that we at TE Connectivity are committed to working the standards and continue the propagation of fiber in these applications.